Good morning, everybody. We're going to kick this off here this morning. All right, good morning, everybody. Come on in, come on in. Juan, can you close the door behind you? All right. So thank you so much for coming today. Before we get started with our traditional tell me something good, I would like to introduce Lisa and Michelle from my NHG. They brought the food, they brought the good time. Great response for today. We want of applause. They have to run, but they wanted to say something real quick. Take a hockey five skips breakfast reader. If you're vegetarian, it says uh, you'll be eaten on there in the bag. Um, we're heading to Fairfield for a regional meeting. But just a reminder, we're with my NHC number one on your RPA drop down. We'd love to work with you guys. If you need help with training, how to read an NHC, 8038 that forms, anything like that, reach out to us. We're here to help support you as well as any sponsorship. So we have hope you guys have a fabulous meeting and we'll be seeing you more. For those yeah. for those online, how, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Um, they can email us at lmassey, which is l m a s s e y, at mynhd.com. and then cell phone is 916-549-1226. and you can call, text, email, and all of our reports are seven days a week, three sixty five. Yep. And if you need anything, just and you forget about it, reach out to myself, Valerie, any other members of the team. We all use them, so they're easy to get a hold of. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming by. Thank you. Have a great one. Bye, all. Drive carefully. All right. Now, so you, you'll, uh, I spent more time than I probably should have on what, we're, what I'm about to do, but um, tell me something good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell me something good. Jen, go ahead, pick it off. Let's see, that's kind of unique that you'll probably never find again. Um, I have a five bedroom, two bath, one story home in Roseville on a half acre with a pool. But the kicker is it has a completely detached ADU that's one bedroom, one bathroom, kitchen, everything. So, and it's on a court in Roseville, uh, 1.1 million. It's off market. So how do they? How should they get a hold of you? Uh, nine one six five three two five eight nine six. Five eight nine. And there six. is a flyer on the Brinko team page. You can take it, share it. You can brand it yourself. I don't care. <laughs> Just trying to help my clients find a buyer before we hit the market. So. Love it. All right, and she's the queen of off market properties. If you want to learn more about that, reach out to Jen as well. Miss Cindy, what do you got? Um, so last night, Jen and I actually went to the launching of the local magazine. So this is a magazine that is um, developed by Sacro producers for the people that are in the top 500. Uh, but this is going to be for everyone. And it is a magazine for really for realtors clients. It is a beautiful magazine and it's full of every trade you can think of. So if you have clients moving into the area, it has everything from estheticians to plumbers to where to get your waxing done, the best places to shop. And so it just was launched last night. And you could even do a digital one where you could attach it to your signature line to give to people, or you could even self-brand it, put yourself on the cover, It'd be super cool, and then give it to your clients. So it's called Be Local. And uh, what else was that? I know, I love my copy. Oh, no, where can we find guy. it? Um, okay. So there is, I could probably get the link from Katie and put it on our Facebook yeah. page, okay. um, team page, because it is really cool. And they're really focusing on Rockland and Lincoln right now. So if you guys know anybody who would like to be in it, um, you know, that you've worked with, please have it someone you work with. They don't want anyone you've ever worked with because that's not good. Um, <laughs> Uh, yes, I think they do. Yes, well, I'm so open to that. Do you guys know what the cost is, or is that based off the business and what section they're in? Based on like how big of an ad you have, and it's super cool though. So, that was awesome. my first thing to say. That's something exciting. That's good because we're always looking for um vendors. Like, we do have a vendor list, there's a Brent Go vendor list for those of you who need it, but sometimes people show up. Or we have needs that aren't on the vendor list, yeah. And it looks really cute, I think, in a closing basket, too. Exactly. Like, you can give it to them. 
Stays on the coffee table. Yeah. Front and center mm -hmm. London. Any other tell me something goods in the room or online? Yeah. Tell me what um, you got. One thing I went to the Sacramento Home Expo on uh last week, and it was just a bunch of vendors who have like a bunch of options for clients after, especially after they're gonna buy a home and they need to update their home. So there's ceiling fans and different companies that can paint your home. There's even a thermal paint that reflects heat. Yeah. Um of the floor. I even have a box literally full of a business card flyer. Dude, love it. You got out there and, and made yourself known and now you met some new people. Yeah, I did. And second thing is um, if you have any investors or buyers who are looking for a five or six bedroom home in Mariana, it's 10246 Mariana in the Sacramento, California. Um, nine. Quad 829, uh, it was built in 2003 by U.S. Home Corporation. Um, it was originally a uh, three, it's 3,360 square foot uh, building, 17,045 square foot um, backyard. Mm -hmm. And it's one in a kind. I couldn't compare it, and the listing agent was struggling to get out interest for four months. Okay. So uh, the listing number is 2220642822. Currently at seven hundred ninety-nine thousand. Uh, I'll give the floor to you. Awesome, thanks, Hermes. All right, now before we move on to our speaker for today, what is Rodney? Yeah. Yeah. Rodney, Ronnie, what's happening in the wonderful world of loans? Loans, uh, it's exciting, right? Especially if you like being on a roller coaster. And <laughs> <laughs> it it is insane right now. now. Rates are still good, right? Just from where we were, they're not as uh, affordable. Let's just say it that way. Um, so, which gets to the point of financing and structures and the products that you're going to use is more important than ever because, you know, the, the rates have, are continuing. And I was just talking a second ago about uh, what the forecast is looking like. So, I mentioned last week about Fannie Mae saying that the average rate for 2023 is going to be four and a half. Yeah, that's the average rate, right? So there's some good news down the road. We don't know exactly when that's going to start, but he gave us a clue yesterday or the day before, he, he being the Fed chairman, and he said that, and this is my interpretation of it, he said that the housing prices need to be corrected. Now, is he talking about our marketplace? He's talking nationwide, right? But there's some relativity to that. What does that mean? He's not going to lower rates anytime soon because no. the rate controls the housing price through affordability. And, and so Fannie Mae yesterday put out, and I don't know if you saw that yet, that they are predicting the sales volume is going to drastically drop next year. So you really need to fine tune your tools and financing is the key, whether it's going to be a seller finance or assumption or, you know, the creative products that are out there, you really need to fine tune your, your you know, financing. So, if rates are not going to probably drop because he's trying to control inflation, yesterday's inflation news that came out, the CPI was higher than expected. So rates are jumping today. They've already, actually, they went up, they went down, and they're back up uh, to about 7.2 right now. Yeah, so we're over 7%, right? Which is still a great rate historically, but not where we were. Yes. Can you, so I know like VA loans are assumable and FHA are assumable. Can a conventional loan be assumable? They they also can be assumable. Do that, yeah. the client call the mortgage company? Yes. How and, they... and probably the service is where you would start sure. because sometimes you don't even know who the mortgage company is because the servicing person is collecting the money. And in fact, I just had that exact conversation uh, uh, earlier this week and the servicer, right? Because I think they don't want to keep those low rates around said to the to the realtor who called in that it would take 90 days to assume that VA rate at wow. 2.75. So they're not being super cooperative in that regard. You're going to have to be, and of course, every service is going to be different. It really shouldn't matter, but the servicers often buy the rights to service. And if you get, if you sell, they just lost money, mm -hmm. right? If, they, if that loan goes away. But the reality is if they don't let it get assumed, then they're probably going to get paid off. They're going to lose it either way. They're just trying to be difficult. Rodney, for those that don't know what assumable means or assuming yeah, a loan, exactly. can, you, can you explain what that, how that process works? Yes, case? great question. So if, if you're not going to get a new loan and the, and the loan on the existing property that you're looking at purchasing is at a great attractive rate in the twos or threes, uh, maybe even fours at this point, right? Um, the home has equity because everything has gone up. 
um, you could either come in and buy the home and take over the existing loan by formally assuming it, and I'll address what I mean by that in a second, because I think that question would follow, um, by either putting down the difference, the equity, right? So if the home was, you know, 200,000 loan, and now it's $400,000 value, and I'm just making up numbers, obviously, you would come in with 200 grand and take over that loan, formally assuming it from the existing lender, just as if you were getting a new loan, you would qualify for the assumption. So there's two options to that qualifying or not to the assumption is one is you put all the money down in cash, or you could maybe get a second, a home equity line of credit or a fixed second. Those products are out there again now too, to fill that gap. Now the rate's gonna be much higher than what you're getting, but the blended rate will make it more affordable and might be easier to do. That comes into the qualification and assumption. Some loans maybe not will not allow a second behind it. Some will. So it's just going to be a you know check and see kind of scenario. The other assumption is called a subject to. Does everybody know what subject to is versus the formal? I would explain it. Okay, yeah. Know. So subject to means literally your seller is going to be at risk with their credit, right? But certain situations they don't care. Maybe their credits are damaged. Um, I personally wouldn't be too excited if I'm the seller to do that because you're one, especially on the VA, you're tying up your, your, your benefit rights, but you could literally, basically you're handing over the payment coupon and changing the address and the new buyer is just going to start making the payments. They're not assuming that loan whatsoever. They're taking it subject to the rights of the existing homeowner and person on title. But then uh, it's still in the owner's credit and everything and the exactly. debt counts. Does the debt count against that seller still? It does. It does. And especially yeah. with VA, it's either double game, right? If it was FH or, yeah. or conventional, it would still be the same thing. That debt is still on this on the debt for that seller or prior owner. With VA, not only is that debt still on there, you're also using their VA uh, uh, eligibility. And so they couldn't just turn around and get another eligibility unless their eligibility has increased over time, which does happen and they could then theoretically get another loan. But that's a whole lot of steps. So, but that, that stuff does happen in real life. And that would you want to also probably talk to your escrow officer because some escrow and title companies don't like to do those transactions because they're not exactly protocol to what the guidelines of the transaction should say for the you know, so there, there's some juggling to go with that, but those are coming up with the assumptions. So you have the formal assumption and the subject to assumption. And how you would do those is either with cash to loan or cash and new loan to fill that gap to the existing loan. Did that answer the question? Good for yeah. me. I have okay. a question. Cindy, yes. So um, our cousin bought a house in June and she's just getting uh, relocated for work. Yes. So obviously she's VA. Yes. She did no money down. Yes. Um, so you know, she bought the house for 525 but the most 537 because she didn't put any money down. Right. Obviously the market has not increased that much to compensate that. Um, first question is, is that um, appraisal still stuck with the house six months after it closes too? Because the higher right sale price will probably be in June versus what it is today. Correct. Does Correct. that stay for six months? Is it stuck to that property? That is a really great question. So that what her question is, when, when a, a government loan is done, FHA or VA, it sticks with that property for a certain time period. Um, not to get too technical, because there's a bunch of steps before closing and after closing that, that apply to that. But when you go to refinance, for example, because um, rates were at four and now they're at two, your existing loan stays in place for 12, or existing appraisal is for 12 months. So if your value had skyrocketed from, in her case, from 525 and now it's 625, and you were thinking of maybe doing cash out or, you know, something, you cannot do that until after 12 months because that appraisal rules the value. So if it was, uh, you know, after 12 months of date of application, both well, closing and date of application are the ruling time frames, then you are stuck with that. But if you went past that, then you could do a new loan. Now, when you are buying the property, if the uh, appraisal has an expert, has a shelf life prior to closing, usually about four months. I, they've extended it through COVID and there's some ways of extending it. Then it gets real technical, but you can make that loan appraisal last for a year. Once it's closed though, 
the file closes, and I don't think I would have to check on that because that is—I've never had that question. We've not had that in ten years. No, right? no one knows that. Right, right. Know right. The answer. right, right, right. So I would check, but my gut would tell me that 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 loan is is closed with that file at that point, or that existing borrower it would exist because of their set of circumstances of qualifying. But a new borrower would get a new loan, and that would not apply. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now under the assumption process. If you think that, right. it probably would still apply. Okay. So the lender would pull that out because that would be the case. So if they assume the loan and then they would assume that. That appraisal, okay. that, yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Yeah, would be my gut. Okay. I mean, I don't know for sure because that is a very specific <laughs> yeah. little thing. It's, it's yeah. not a good situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think in those situations with VA, she, if it's VA that's relocating her, her eligibility would still be eligible, be allowed to. She'd be able to get another one. Yeah, because what they told her is, I guess, a month ago, it just changed. And VAs now, they could, she could turn that into an investment property and purchase another property and still have um, the VA benefits. Because I right. guess they're allowing VAs to buy investment properties as many as they want now, using their VA benefits before they come in. Right. You know, if um, they're relocated by VA. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. what I meant by they could be done. Yeah. Before. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. You bet. You bet. So any other you, quick you questions? You should be able to be a VA, you mean like they're active military and the military. Yes. Yes. Just stuff the thought. Like right, that. right, right, right. Now there are some extenuating circumstances with like maybe death, right? Or family issues where that sometimes they will bend the rules a little bit for that, but generally it's going to be that situation. And you can only use that VA benefit to buy investment property if it's active military. Well, you're not really buying the investment property. You're turning your existing one into investment property and you're buying yourself a new residence. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Clears mud. Anything else? <laughs> Anything else from the wonderful world of lending? I would still say, as I was, um, I you know mentioned last week, uh, that the buy down is probably still the hottest product out there right now because if you know if your buyer doesn't want to buy, saving eight hundred dollars a month from whatever interest rate, whatever loan program that's out there, they really don't want to buy, right? And then there's an education process that you want to do because you can literally save your borrower. They have to qualify at today's rates, right? They're still going to qualify, but you could save them $800 a month two days right now. So it'd be like, and I wanted to make a video that I'm going back in time kind of thing. You could go back to January of this year almost, right? I didn't run the math, and, uh, but I think literally $800 is probably what payments have gone up since January. So, you know, if your buyer would have bought then, why wouldn't they buy now? You kind of have to do that talk graph. It doesn't cost them a penny. It comes from the seller. Seller's doing price reductions already. It's cheaper for them to do that product. And my question I didn't ask, but I want to ask last week, I'm going to ask today is, do you know how to structure that in the offer? Does, does it someone not know? It's very simple. I would just put, just say, tell us how around it. Yeah, yeah. You just want to get seller financing concessions, you know, whether it's, for, you know, the standard plot, uh, phrase for reoccurring, non-reoccurring, yeah. right? Just ask for 10 grand or whatever number it is, 10 grand will give you $800 a month off for, for the first year. You can do one year, you can do two years, and then it gets them over that hump to, you know, the other question, which is now coming more and more as these price reductions are rolling in, it's not just about, well, yeah, it's, you know, because in January, they would have took that $800 lower payment, right? Because they're buying payments. His, uh, well, the market's crashing. Why do I want to buy now, right? So you just need to arm yourself up with our market's not necessarily crashing. The media is saying, but they're talking nationally or a specific market. So have your data that you can throw back to them. It's like, don't miss out on this opportunity. Because when Fannie Mae puts the rate on the average of next year at four and a half, guess what? Buyers are coming back because affordability is coming back. Inventory is not going to jump up that much more. So prices will tend to increase. And I'm sure they're going to play with that rate to try and moderate uh, you know, the sales volume. So buy the house today. You're going to keep the house. You're just dating that rate and then change the rate later. And people seem, seem to find, sort of understand that when you kind of break it down to them in that regard because they're going to get the rate that they want or eventually, right? But they're getting the house ahead of time. And Ronnie, you know? I heard something the other day too, though, that if you're getting those seller concessions to buy down the rate, they have to pay for 100% of that rate buy down for certain programs. Is that true? Is that not true? For certain programs, it, it is true. Yes. And an excellent point. That I want to make sure is really you know highlighted here. You can't just get like a hundred thousand dollar seller concession, right? Well, in, in some price points, you might be able to do a certain loan program. But in general, 
depending on FHA conventional VA, they have different limits before it's considered a seller concession. You don't want the concession because then what happens is they take the value of the concession off of the appraised value. So now your borrower has to, or buyer has to come back in with that equal amount. It makes no sense, mm -hmm. right? So make sure you're working with your lender to make sure that you're doing it properly. Generally, it's 3%. FHA, you can do 6% across the board. And until you, I think you get to a 10% down payment, then you can increase it. Conventional 3% until you get to 10%, then it goes to 6%. And then once you get down to 80%, right? So you can structure these things if they have that much cash. Then you can go to twelve percent with conventional for, before it's considered a concession. Wow. Yeah. So you know it, it's all strategies and structures and getting the moving parts together. But when you do the math, it might be better. So it's like I'm not paying ten percent or six percent. What you would do a fifty grand price reduction, right? Yeah. yeah. So you know just do the math and, and sell your services and and I'm you know I'm happy to help out to have those joint conversations or structure or whatever. To make the deals happen because every deal is going to get more important today as the volume is decreasing so let's brainstorm real quick with interest rates going up how's that like how can we how can we communicate that in a positive light to buyers why should buyers be purchasing a home now like what are some thoughts what are you telling your clients because i know what i'm telling my clients but i'd like to hear what other people are doing the tax benefits mm -hmm. yes yeah. school district taxes Schools, um, third. I'm mean, here, stability, right? You're not, your rent's not going up next year. Or savings. I mean, really, because you're you're not gaining an interest only, so you're still creating equity yeah. over time. Principal pay down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's more options of housing to purchase. I like inventory. Yeah, more than John said about the um, like uh, he said about the rent is like a hundred percent interest. Yeah. Like the I thought that one too. I was like, yeah. dang, that was good. Yeah, it was <laughs> yeah, the pros are something. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right? So whatever you guys want to get. So so um, you're getting tax benefits. You get to live in a more favorable school district. Your rent's not going to go up. You're building equity. There's more inventory right now. There's seller concessions, right? I've seen seller concessions mm -hmm. and then um inflation and protection but yeah hedge against inflation hedge against the big eye and then um it's your own house you can do what you want paint it however you want landscape it however you want you don't have to ask for permission. you don't have to worry about the landlord so, uh, so the guards are still, i guess i'm still on the uh, taking advantage of the last year of the solar credit solar big credit. deal yeah. Tony, did you just say smoking cigars where you were? <laughs> that was the big one. <laughs> but um, another thing, too, is as interest rates are going up, the, the, the house is there to buy goes down, right? So it does not benefit them to wait. Even if the market does go down, higher prices do go down, you're paying more money for the last house. Does that make sense? And rent doesn't necessarily correlate going down, right? So yeah. they're better off by owning it because their payment is fixed. Okay, so that's the buy, right? So there's lots of reasons why it's a good time to purchase a home right now. Not wait till the spring, not wait till practice can validation. Also, if they are renting right now um, and they are afraid to go into the adjustable rate mortgage, it's like, well, your rent could go up more than your payment could go up. Yeah. 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 Yes. Rent is unstable. So we just 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 lock these in. I mean, you don't have to have all like eleven memorized just word vomit over people. Like, ah, get off me. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know what I'm saying? Just have like a couple that really resonate with you, or that resonate with that client. If you're talking about renting and they're not renters, then that's why you're talking about the benefits of something that you're selling, right? But if you're talking about how they currently own a home and they are wanting to buy another home, right? They're going to be able to buy more house right now if they sell. That doesn't seem to the sellers. So what? Why is now a good time? Can I add one comment on the taxes? John? Absolutely. There's Brent talked about this all the time. I talk about it as well. Is it's like getting a pay raise without getting an official raise, right? Because the tax benefits, you can go to your HR mm -hmm. and say, "I bought a house," and adjust your deduction with holdings, and so you can actually get more take home than you would if you're staying in a rental, right? If you actually own it, so you'd be able to. They might be worried about that cash flow. You know, your payment's probably gone up a little bit versus renting. That could help to justify that. 
Good point. So why is now why is now a good time to sell rather than the spring? Prices are falling. <laughs> right? So like for your friend, like if this was if they bought in 2020 and they were selling now, mm -hmm. right? They'd be they even if it was just a couple months later, they wouldn't buy it. Mm -hmm. But I just went through it yesterday. They bought it exactly 25 months ago. Did all they did was pour a little teeny driveway in their netting two hundred thousand dollars in Alberta. Wow. Out of Alberta. Alberta. <laughs> in Alberta. Right. Not, not, not Alberta. Hey, don't know how much two hundred thousand dollars more. That's because somebody else got a really high appraisal right down the street. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> somebody paid the way for your paid driver. Yeah, you might. <laughs> Magic markets. 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 Because I said so. Well, because I mean, I feel right now the buyers that are buying, they have to buy. Like, yeah. it's not that they want to buy right now, to they have to buy. There's <laughs> more quality too, because they, I mean, they have to go through the rigorous qualifications now. Mm -hmm. So they're a lot more determined. Mm -hmm. Motivated buyers. And then also, a lot of people are starting to catch on. Like, if you look in the MLS, like under the trends, average um, sales price to sold price or list price to sold price. It's 5%, right? Mm -hmm. or, or it's 95%, percent drop. So if that's a $500,000 home, I mean, yeah. that seller is probably going to sell on average $25,000 below list. Mm -hmm. There's still only like two and a half months of inventory, too. Yeah, but yeah. They're they're not, not, they're still still not, there's still not, not as much inventory as you would think. I mean, I have buyers, but I still can't find what they're looking for. I think you need to identify who the seller is, too, right, Johnny? Because you're about a 50 50 mix. Made a little heavier on the owner occupied versus an investor, right? And investors are going to have a different mentality than the homeowners, right? Yeah. And and part of the recent flux influx of uh, sales like listings was the i buyers exiting the market. They, I think it was Zillow. Zillow's done. They just the last house to open door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they bought the open door, right? So it's a little bit of a shell game there. Uh, yeah. So it's so it is a seller's market. Right, but here's the other thing: if interest rates go up, your buyer pool shrinks, right? And then that's going to push prices down in your buyer pool. Right? So you want to buy sooner because interest rates are going up. Mm -hmm. You know what that is. I so feel um, for sellers too, at least on my listings and my buyers, they're getting more cash because my people who could afford cash are not doing loans just because loans are cheap right now. They're going cash. I feel we're seeing, I'm seeing more cash offers, and my clients saying, "Never mind, I won't do the loan. I'll do cash." So I feel there's more cash out there right now. More cash on service. Mm -hmm. right. So there, there's five reasons right there right now is a good time to wait rather than okay, if you're looking to sell a house. So just lock this in because what we're hearing, you know, all they're hearing is the doom and gloom on the talking heads on the on the television, right? Mm -hmm. They're 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 selling fear, they're they're peddling fear in order to sell toothpaste and cars, mm -hmm. right? They're not they're not improving anybody's lives. And so we have to be the voice of reason. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. That's true. Right. Good stuff. So with that, let's bring up the main event for today. The headliner, I'm just a warm up act. Everybody please give a big round of applause and welcome to the front of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, so um, the reason we, I kind of wanted to come in and speak today is, right, um, is because this is, you know, the time of the year that we're trying to kind of save money. We don't know, like we're saying, what next year will predict. Um, some of us might be in this room because we couldn't afford EXP con, so we're here today. Um, so we know funds are very limited at this time of the year, and it's smart to do that. I mean, I'm, I'm watching what I'm spending right now, too, because we don't know what next year will do. However, this is also a time to drum up business. So what I do um, is Popeyes. Now, I am curious in this room, how many people raise their hand have done Popeyes before? Yeah. Why are all the men not raising their hands here? <laughs> and that seems what it always did. I put some years together. That is true. <laughs> So for those of you that don't know what Popeyes are, it is when you pop by and give one of your future clients, past clients, or someone in the industry a gift. Now you go, oh my gosh, a gift, that sounds expensive. Well, you guys, it's not expensive. And this is the perfect time of the year. We've got Halloween coming up, we've got Thanksgiving coming up, and we've got Christmas coming up. So you have three holidays that it's super easy to buy for. My favorite one is Halloween. 
Um, it's just a fun time, especially people that have kids. It's really easy to go buy stuff because it's in every store. Um, so Halloween is one of my favorite Popeyes I do. So I kind of wanted to go over with what I do for my Popeyes. Um, so what I do is um, to kind of show you. So these are my Popeyes. See, they're nothing really that exciting. They're just little bags. And what we do is we drop these bags off at my past client's house. And then you don't have to do this. But what I also did, I had Larry at Paradise Signs make me sign. And I put this sign in their yard. So the reason I put this sign in the yard, number one, so they look for the gift on their front porch and some people pull in their garage and never see it and candy melt. Number two is <laughs> free advertising, guys. Free advertising all over it. Every time you put one of these in the yard, the neighbors are going to go, well, what the heck? Our realtor didn't get me one. What? What, what is Cindy doing? I, I want to use her. I want to pop by. So these are something you could add on in the future. As we know, signs are kind of expensive. Um, so this is something I didn't do at first, but then I added it on. And it's great because... We just go and pick it up three days later and move it to a different house. So, you know, you only have to have 12 of them. Um, we don't leave them there. They don't get to keep them. We leave a little note on the back of the bag that says we'll be back. We generally drop them off on Thursday and pick them up on Monday. So everybody through the weekend gets to see them. And then we move them to the next house. So you don't need a lot of these. I mean, you could get away with just a couple. And especially if you're new, it just might be a couple. Yes, Rodney? Yeah, I'm just curious. How much did it cost me to go and how long did it take to get them? So I um, called Larry and he had them done for me in 24 hours. And for do not call Larry and say that Cindy yeah, did not yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> in 24 hours because Cindy's house is going to get like yeah. food from so, but for 12 of them was $165. So, you know, they are pricey, but you figure, I mean, you use them every year. You know, occasionally I use blues one to two and it could be a blue away. I don't know. Some of them don't read the back of it and accidentally throw it in the garbage. Or sometimes you have a crazy wife who yeah. <laughs> throws them away too. Um, I had this last year. <laughs> who thought I was the appraiser and yelled at me that I appraised her house wrong. And I'm like, I'm no realtor. I'm not the appraiser. So we did lose them. But kind of just show you what's in these. So what I've done is I've made each of these bags. Um, you guys, these bags were a total of $3.85. So you guys, everyone could spend less than $4 on one of their clients to make one of these. So I got these bags from Amazon. They come 30 in a pack. Um, and we bought the tissue. Tissue paper is kind of the most expensive part, you guys, because orange and black for some reason expensive. Um, but for 60 bags with the paper was $49. Inside, what I put is um, we just... This is a bottle of Fireball. Um, we decided to put a poison sticker on it that this year because last year a child did try to drink it. <laughs> Make though, you know, if you're gonna have alcohol, kind of put like a poison sticker on it. So this is a little bottle of Fireball. Um, I like to put, you know, all kinds of glow sticks in there because when kids go trick or treating, they love glowing. Um, I always pick one big thing to put in there and every year I change it. Now, when I say big, I shop at the 99 cent store, guys. The big thing is the one thing that cost a dollar in here. Um, so I usually do anything from like coffee cups. Um, this year, the 99 cent store had these really cute skulls that had succulents coming out of them. We did those. We also did like these are little candy dishes or spoon dishes or jewelry dishes. Um, and we got them in ghosts and pumpkins and all kinds of things like this, 99 cents. Um, and then we added little things like, you know, a pack of stickers, you know, just some kind of filler. We've got some, you know, pumpkins they could decorate, you know, tons of candy in here. Um, I've also got, you know, those spider rings because, you know, you guys, you want to look for things that you could buy in bulk. So like these little pumpkins, you know, are 12 for 99 cents. So they're great fillers. Um, these cut stickers, 12 for 99 cents. Um, the rings come, you know, the spider rings and all the kids wear, those are 50 of them for 99 cents. Glow sticks are eight for 99 cents. So you want to look at things that you could buy multiple of, because otherwise you could end up spending more and really, they don't really care what's in them. They're just excited you drop something off at their porch. And then the great thing is once you know drop something off of the porch, they're generally going to do a post for you. Uh, free advertisement, once again, they're going to be on the next side of the so great. Take a picture of their new bag. And then you could share that on your social media. So the great thing is it's kind of, a you know, for $4, where do you get all this advertising and make your clients happy? Yeah. Um, now, this is just one that I like to do. There's all different things that you could do during um, the fall season. So let's bring up someone. Okay, here we go. Here's one of Jen's. Um, Jen did a pop by of strawberry jam. Her and the kids just went down to the local strawberry patch down the street from her house and they made jam and it says real estate is my jam. 
And she dropped that off at all of her clients' house. They love it. They have pictures of the kids eating toast and tag Jen, you know, and Jam on it. Little things. And they love it because her kids helped her make it. So, you know, they also love something, even though it's just a small jar of jam, but Jen and her kids made it. So, you know, they really liked it. Um, like Brenda on my team, she went and passed out scarecrows the other day. Oh, that's so all cute. from the 99 cent store. And she was so cute because she even dropped them off at my client's house for me. And they're like, thank you for the scarecrow. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, <I'm not> <laughs> like, oh, goodness. So, you know, things like that. And that was a cute one because you could just stick it in the front of their yard. Once again, neighbors are going to see it, wonder why they didn't get one in the neighborhood and other people did. Mm -hmm. Um, Because this is what she was using for her milk route um, in a community. So we already got calls about how come I didn't get one. Um, those are some ideas. Um, I know Mariah's really good at Popeyes. Do you have any Popeyes that you've done that really stood out over other ones? Um, I've done the, the Halloween stuff during Christmas time. I'll have my kids. They love to sing. So we go and like do little, I know it's, no one does that anymore where they do Christmas carols, but they make cookies and they bring them by and they love them. And Cute. Them, so. Cute. What's some other things that people have done just to share that have done Popeyes? Do you guys have a favorite one that you guys like doing? Then at Halloween we did, which I don't know if Johnny has a picture of that one, but I had a local baker and it was pretty inexpensive, maybe five bucks a client, but I had a local baker do sugar cookies that were Halloween themed. So really you could do it for any holiday, right? You just change the theme of the cookie. And she put together this whole little bag that was little Halloween cookies and all like the icing and stuff to decorate it. Best part was she branded the bag for me. She put my real estate information, put it on a sticker slapped on the bag. So we just went and picked it up and you know, dropped them off or whatever. That was another one where there were so many posts on that one that people were like, oh, great. You know, thank you. Um, and what was the other one? Oh, and then every year for uh, oh, Girl Scout season, oh. there's a little tag that we have that says something like, happiness is when your realtor buys you Girl Scout cookies. And so one, I use a past client's kid to buy all. So she's like always number one because I go and buy like 50 bucks, 50 boxes of which that one's a little bit more expensive. That's like 250 bucks or something that I spend on cookies. But one, that kid absolutely loves me. She <laughs> um, But that's another one that's pretty. And, absolutely. And then there's also, I have a whole, um, I don't know if you get the same thing, but on Pinterest, I have an entire little board where I just put pop by ideas. You can do stuff super inexpensive. Mm -hmm. People literally just get excited about the thought. Yeah, if you guys are not following Pinterest and Etsy on Popeyes, you're missing the boat, man. I mean, that's where you get all your ideas and you can stem off of them. They just, they have whole sections of that. Yeah. And, you know, you could even watch what other people are doing. Um, I saw Nick Sadak's team during COVID. Um, what they did is, which I thought was kind of cool because I, I got one, they dropped off recipe cards and then uh, cards and um, with a recipe on it. And then they did a Zoom class teaching you how to make what was on that card. Oh, and I thought that was super cute and I was like wouldn't it be cuter if you actually drop the ingredients off like you did cookie making and uh because I've been talking to my my real estate coach also owns a bakery and I was like do you think you could like do the zoom and we could all just you know get the cookie stuff and drop it off because I think everyone would do that you know why not you've got the stuff at the house who wouldn't join the zoom to learn how to make special Christmas cookies or something like that yeah. so you could do the hot cocoa oh. jars you can keep again it's something you could do with your kids and maybe little hot cocoa jars and drop that off yes there's all sorts of stuff you can do it Fairly I know Manu's done that one too, the hot cocoa pop, you know, Popeyes. That's a cute one at this time of the year, especially you get a Christmas mug. Valerie, what do you got? Well, another one, it's not, it's extremely cheap, but again, it's just a thought, right? And it doesn't really matter what time of year. We've done like a card, just a card, like thinking of you, you know, handwritten note, whatever, and then put in a little packet of pop rocks, which I don't even know. I mean, maybe like 12 cents each for each packet. And then you write like just wanted to pop by thinking of you, you know. You like, rock or something like rock, that. Thanks a lot, O. And with stuck lottery tickets yeah. in there. Thanks a lot, O, for being a great client. Yeah, yeah. oh, in spring, I do forget me nots. Um, buy a packet of forget me nots um seeds. And I mail that out every spring to all my new clients. Um, I put our logo and everything on it. That's easy. You buy those once again, 99 cent store. You just have to know, like when it comes to these time of the year, the 99 cent stores and the Dollar Tree, don't wait. 
because you're going to get the crap stuff. You got to like, we usually start in September for October stuff. We're trying to always be a month behind uh, because then you get stuck with the yucky stuff. But really it's about, you know, the thought that counts. And it could be something so simple. Like I, every, every one of my clients, um, they get a birthday card with a $1 um, lottery, to, excuse me, scratcher ticket in it. I got that from Rick Jiha, um, have custom cards made. They're less than, you know, the most expensive thing is the lottery <laughs> ticket for a dollar. But there's so many people out there, you guys, I'm the only person ever since them a birthday card mm -hmm. and they're so thankful and you're like it costs like not even two dollars to make their birthday for them so there is a lot of things that is very inexpensive and you know people always ask me how are you 100 referral business it's because i show my clients i care i'm doing these pop buys they look forward to it like everyone's like what is she going to bring this time and i sometimes try to switch up the holidays so you know throw them off mm -hmm. sometimes we're able to do everybody like this year you know there's too many clients last year so Unfortunately, it's just my Rockland and Roseville people who are going to get all the booze this year, where before we've gone all the way down to West Sacramento up to Plumas Lake, um, which is great because if you have the time and gas isn't crazy expensive, that's great too, because people are like, oh my God, Cindy, you live in Rockland, you drove all the way to West Sacramento to drop this off on my porch. So it means a lot to them. So any, any it's anybody, you guys. So like, even if you only have two clients, like I always do it for my title reps. Um, I do it for my pest company. I, I give it to everybody just to show that I care. Um, so, you know, just drop it up. I, I did it, you guys, to the reception step here. Guess what? I sold her house. Um, <laughs> so I'm telling you, think of the people that you're always around and just drop it off. It's so simple. And literally, you could even do this. They, I just was there the other day. They have um, right now 12 to 14 bags for 98 cents at the 99 cent store. I don't know why it's 98 cents. Um, but like that's 12 gifts. Like you could go and spend probably $12 and make 12 gifts to pass out to people. And it's just the thought that counts. And what I realized too is make sure you get the good candy though. Don't cheat on the yeah. bad candy. Don't yeah. don't get like a bunch of like sour warheads or something. Like give them the M&Ms and the Snickers, they really want. That's where I tend to spend the most money. Um, but you guys, I bought two of those giant bags for $35 at Sam's Club, yeah. like with all the good stuff. Um, so it's not yeah. really expensive. I mean, you can see you fill a whole bag for under $4. How do you pick? Because you said like you, this year you picked different groups. Like how did you, how do you pick who you're going to get? That's a great question. So this year, because last year was such a crazy year and the year before, um, I had to, okay, go, what am I going to do? So what I did is, I made sure everyone who sold from October to October, um, who still lives here, because we did, you know, get a lot of people that moved out of state, and it's obviously they're not getting anything. And I work with tons of investors, which obviously all live in the Bay Area and not here. So it was all my local people who bought and sold here. Then once I got that group together, then I said, okay, how many do, you know, what do we've got left? So then I decided, okay, always Rockland, because that's where I live. And I want, you know, most people know me in Rockland, so I want my signs up in Rockland Homes. And then I said, okay, I'm going to go to Roseville, so I'm going a little bit farther out so I just kind of do the bags and I go okay these are the people that fit in this category and that's how I pick them yeah. it's you know with gas prices it's kind of hard to go all over but if you only have like 10 past clients why not mm -hmm. you know why not and every year you guys every year I get at least one lead last year I got six homes from this oh. six so do you think it's worth three hundred dollars you know what I I mean it was the total I forget what the total was on there but it was like under three hundred dollars yeah. for six listings I think it's worth it. <laughs> I think it's worth it. You just get one deal from it. And it's reminding them to going into this hard season, remind them here, I'm still thinking of you. Here I am, you know. So I think it's super important. Yeah. So two more things. One thing Cindy and I were talking about with the signs. Like if you don't have the money to go make a sign, put on like some cardstock paper and print out the flyer and leave it on there. At least it's still something, you know, and they know who it came from, but it's less expensive so you can afford the signs. Yes. And the other thing is, that's a big key that I think we both do. Um, I always take my kids, well, a kid, one of them, there's so many, um, with me, and I have them get out and drop it off. Because what I don't want is if I can sit with the client for yeah. forever. So yeah. I'm like, no, the kids drop it off, and they're like, so you're in and out quickly without, because I mean, you're dropping off, like, I know they do like 50 pop buys. I think you're similar to anywhere from yeah. 80. And so you kind of want to. Wham bam, thank you, ma'am. And go. so when the kids are dropping off, they're like, oh, thanks. It's not this big long conversation. I might wait from the car, but I just don't get it. And that's a good point. So the cool thing with these is because it's a surprise, you don't want to see them. Oh, it's a surprise. Cool. So we drop it off while they're at work. Mm -hmm. So when they get home from work, then it's there. Mm -hmm. So not to say I don't want to talk to my clients, but like yeah. Jen said, you're just you're doing, doing 50 of them. Though. And the nice thing about it's a booth, it's right. They're not supposed to see you, they're just supposed to find the gifts. So you don't have to talk to them, even though we'd love to. 
<laughs> but yeah, that's a really, really great thing too. And um, just, yeah, just get out there and do it. Like, even if it's just a card, like they said, it's just a card, mm -hmm. but they don't, no one mails cards anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody does, but that's all bills that come in the mail. There's nothing exciting. I mean, I know for me, like how exciting is when you actually get a birthday card because nobody sends them anymore. Mm -hmm. And then they get something in it. My last client, she just scratched it and she won 50 bucks. She was stoked, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, well, it was fun. <laughs> One did win. <laughs> um, so, you know, just make it really simple. And it's cool with the scratchers too, you guys, because they make them holiday, like for holidays. So they have, you know, Christmas ones and New Year's ones. So it's a great another reason because it's already, you know, got the holiday stuff on it for you guys. And you just send it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And look, and there's, and I always do you guys for the cards too, the pre-made ones. Um, there's websites through EXP that you could have them where they brand your stuff mm -hmm. on the back. It has all your information. It looks like, you know, you get to pick what you want to write in it, pick what you want on the front of it. They're, they come up to 33 cents a card. You mean it's cheaper cool. than the Dollar Tree. Yeah. <laughs> mine are branded happy birthday EXP cards too, but mine, the inside are blank because I, although my handwriting is horrific, I always yes. handwrite it because I want them to know that. I'm, and I try to pick something about it. And I think that's really important too, is make sure if you do sign your card to actually sign them, please don't get them already pre-written with your signature. Everyone knows that's fake. Yeah. No matter how, I mean, these companies say, oh, <laughs> like, you know, like who's in here? Uh, they say it looks real. Everybody knows it's fake and it kind of takes away from it. Even all you have to do is love your realtor, Cindy. Just, that's all you have to write. You don't have to write a big novel or anything like that. That's all I do is love your realtor, Cindy. That's all I do. But definitely handwrite it because you want to show that personal touch and handwrite your um, envelopes. I mean, and that's just kind of my mom taught me that it's kind of old school but especially the older generation they really appreciate that and remember the older generation are the move up buyers that have more money so you want to really cater to and even them. if you're um the open rate when you're doing mailers even if it were just a regular mail like pop by a side birthdays inside if you're just doing a regular mailer like a client that you can't find a property for or something you can write the address and believe me and how many times have it put me i'm going through and writing like 100 freaking letters it's a lot but the open rate is so much higher because I mean, I've had people call me going, well, I opened it because I thought it was because it was handwritten. Mm -hmm. Now, the return address, that might put a sticker on. Yeah. But if you write it out, the open rate is significantly higher than if you just yeah. do a, um, a label. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I always even just make my return labels like, whatever it is, if it's birthdays, it has like little balloons on it. If it's the Christmas card, it's got, you know, Christmas. And so they can really see it was personalized. It just wasn't a run through your system. Kind of thing. So one question, Cindy, uh, we're talking about past clients, but I know a lot of people in this room are newer, maybe don't mm -hmm. have past clients. This sounds like it would be a great idea for your steer, friends yeah. and family, right? Absolutely. And I even know last year, Mariah, Rose, I, we had a listing coming up and we just hit the whole neighborhood. And that's how we invited them to the open house is we invite, if we were dropping off these little Popeyes and invite them to the open house, try to get them clients. Got it. So last year when I just started back in real estate, um, I put a skeleton on kind of similar bags that Cindy did. And I had a little caption that said, I'm dying for your girl. And I said, <laughs> 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 and I got referrals from it. Um, so you just have to be witty with it and just be creative and try to know like, what is your intention and what are you trying to get out of it? Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Yeah. I, like, I like how you mentioned too for open houses because sometimes mm -hmm. if the open house is slow, we'll shoot, show up a little bit early, stay a little bit late, knock some doors and say, I'm dying for your referral. Absolutely. Known in the area. Make 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 that moment productive. Absolutely. And they're going to remember that open house and they're yeah. going to want to go because you just stop by the house and personally invite them. And they usually, or if you even just leave it there, they'll come just to say thank you. Mm -hmm. And then you can get their information that way because it's very rare people, especially if it's an open house and you're doing it, dropping it. Because even if they weren't home, we were still leaving it on their porches. Mm -hmm. They all came over and, and said thank you. So it's a great way to make a connection and they already like you because you're going to know something. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Any questions for Cindy or the group on Popeyes? No, you guys did a fantastic job. Thank you so much for By the way, your social media person is speaking next week. Yes. You want to just so, tell us a little bit of what that's about? So I'm super excited. So um, next week I am bringing in my social media manager, Monica. Um, social media changed dramatically in the last two and a half weeks. Crazy like it's never, ever changed before. Um, it's really important. All the algorithms for all the main sites, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok have changed. So whatever you thought you knew in the past, 
throw it out the window. It is not the same anymore. The algorithms have changed. So we're going to be talking about the algorithms. Um, it's There's been a lot of changes to Facebook, some good, some bad. Um, we're going to talk about what's the most popular thing to see right now. Um, just to throw you one example, um, we they started doing Reels. Reels is obviously everything is about Reels right now. Well, Facebook just started doing Reels. Um, this was about two weeks ago. My first reel has almost 29,000 views. My first reel, you guys. 29,000 views on Facebook. Where real she was like a bikini on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> like, a reel. like, I was like, what? So there are, like, you've got to know what's on top. Because I'm thinking, oh, my God. You know, you could only have 5,000 followers on, on Facebook. But yeah. 28, almost, I think I'm 28.8 for my very first one. I mean, 20,000 people viewed it. It's crazy. So I'm going to teach you guys how to get into that, what the changes are, what the algorithms are, because it's not about how many people like you or who you're friends with or any of that stuff. That's kind of all gone, guys. Wow. Um, they're changing and what, what sites they're pushing out, like business versus personal has changed. So I'm just really excited to teach you guys all about what's changing. It's something that I really love doing and I take a million classes on it. And if you don't, then you just lose out because what you were doing six months ago, if you're doing it now, you're not getting any, any traction. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been studying other people's too, and they may have, you know, 10,000 followers, but I look at their views on there and I'm like, well, they got 50 people to click on their their thing. So obviously they're doing something wrong. If you have 10,000 followers, 50 people, you know, shouldn't be clicking on it. But if you have, you know, 14,000, you know, 1400 followers and 20,000 people are following you, well, we're doing something right. So I want to teach you guys how to, you know, make sure you do it right. And she is wonderful. So bring your questions, think about it. Um, we'll teach you how the new algorithms are going. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> hey, hey, I've got a question for Cindy. Hello. Hi, Cindy. Hi. Hi. Listen, when are we going to Macoonies again? Yeah, <laughs> hey, you go to the of him and you get you get to meet everyone that works there. I got to meet Taro, all the head chefs. I'll go with you any day. <laughs> Dude, I got to go with you, Michael. Come on, man. <laughs> Thanks, one way. You got it, John. <laughs> all right. Well, everybody, that's all we have for today. Just making sure the only last, 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 last thing is um, coming up very, very soon is the business planning clinic. So be there, be square. It's coming up November 17th. Go ahead and RSVP. If you're in, if you're wanting to recruit agents to your production team or attract agents to EXP, invite them to the event because it's free. You can sponsor them. You can sponsor as many as you want. It's going to be at Peacock. Yeah, November 17th. All right. Well, with that, you guys have a fantastic rest of your Thursday. Take care, all. <laughs>